All right, hello everyone. I've been putting this off for quite a while, but I've been promising time after time to make this guide for how to get the Quiet Dagger and pretty much everything around it. Um, this will include basically what the challenge is, how to get it, um, what you need to do, what you need to have to you know to help you do it, as well as um, uh, different ways of completing the this Rise of the Phoenix challenge. Because I know that a lot of people struggle with this and have asked me you know to make a basic guide about it. Um, there is a, a co-op exploit, but I won't be talking about that today. Today is going to be talking about um, everything that you can do in solo that can really help you uh, get this uh, bounty completed, and you will be able to get the quiet dagger for it. So let me just go over to um, the game here. Now, of course, uh, since it's a bounty, um, you need to go to your bounty board. Now, this only works uh, if you've completed the game on your save. So right now, I have a save here that's completed the main game, uh, the main story, of course. Um, and then you'll see it, all these bounty boards here, uh, all these bounties will pop up. Now, you ignore all the others. The one that we're looking for is Rise of the Phoenix. And here we go. You see here the rewards are uh, is called the quiet dagger now that's what everyone's obviously wanting to do here wanting to achieve so the the bounty it should be the first one that pops up underneath the regular bounties here and it's also repeatable as you can see they've completed it already before on this save so we go ahead and accept that it's now on our track quest you see it on across the screen on my right hand side now a good way to um to actually you know go over to where we actually start off all the time because uh, one really annoying thing in this game that i know that everyone experiences is that if they fail because they have to run all the way to this side of the map, is that they have to run all the way across the map back to here. Well, thankfully, there's a quest nearby that if we track, we'll teleport to every single time, and that is Stuff Total. So, if we select Stuff Total as our track quest, and we quit to main menu here, and then we simply continue back into our game again, you'll notice that we'll respawn right outside Stuff Total, which is very close by to basically where we need to... Um, start the bounty. So it's a very simple and easy and effective method to simply restart uh, this every single time. So every time you fail the bounty, you can simply track stuff total and you'll teleport uh, back to here. Now, um, a lot of people also think that's really annoying to climb this tower every single time. However, if you stand about here and grapple at this spot where I'm looking at, in, on the left hand side of these little four, uh, I don't know what these things are, but yeah, there's a little railing here. Make sure you grab that. If you grapple too far left, crane won't climb. But uh, So make sure you grapple just about in the middle, in between the left pole here and these little weird four pylon things, right about there in the middle. If you grapple that, crane will climb up here. And then we could just simply climb up the rest of the way. So it just skips a lot of climbing, having to do all these resets and stuff. So again, we just go up here. Now, before we start, um, well, there are a couple things we can use in our runs here. Now, we we'll obviously have our, uh, we can't use our grappling hook during this run. As it literally says on the right hand side, do not use grappling hook. Now, um, you actually can't use any boosters as well because the, the, it automatically fails upon using it. However, uh, boosters are actually treated differently if you're playing on Nightmare or Hard Difficulty. So right now I'm on Nightmare Difficulty and you'll notice if I drink a booster and activate it, it doesn't fail. So that's a very interesting thing, because uh, on, if I did this on normal or story mode, it would actually fail upon drinking a booster. So if you're really struggling, you can actually drink speed or 900 boosters as you run this throughout this course. I haven't tested this with stuff like eggnog or GRE recipe or anything like that, but it should be fine. So that's so that's how that goes. Let's just uh, quit that. Let's, let's just imagine that we failed. And obviously, look, we have to run all the way back here. Imagine I had to restart all the way from the end here. Well, we can just simply go back to menu. And go back in. Now, obviously, of course, uh, I didn't say this before when doing it for the first time, but if you're on console, the loading times can take quite a while, so this might not be worth it. But on PC, or like any mid to high tier PC, it's definitely 100% worth doing this. If you're lazy like me, instead of having to run all the way back. And it's just efficient for time if you're grinding this over and over again. So, let's go back over here. And we go here. So, that method, using any boosters to help you, would be, you know, greatly beneficial for you. As I, you know, I used... Uh, you can use any kind of booster, obviously a speed one like uh, ones here, but uh, if you want to do this legit or you know want to use it without the booster or don't want to switch difficulties, then that's absolutely fine because I'm going to talk about how to do that without the booster as well here. So, so if we just go back to the top like I just did and demonstrated before, 
You notice I also have the Paisa suit in my inventory. Now this isn't necessary either, but it does help for one section of the of this thing. So obviously we have our maxed out agility camera uh, character that should be given. You should be you shouldn't be doing this at level one or something, even though I have. But um, this vault skill will help a lot, um, as well as the method not using a Paisa suit, which is, includes RAM, which uh, we'll see in just a moment. So as soon as we start off here, let's just talk about the route. In fact, let's ignore this right for now, so we have no time constraints. Let's just go down the zip line without the time constraints, just to demonstrate the route that we're going to be taking here. So you want what we want to do is you want to time getting off the zip line early by pressing C on PC, which is the uh, the roll key or the crouch key, or the or your equivalent on console. If you drop off early, then you land on here without having to fall down here and have to climb back up again to hit this checkpoint. So make sure you do that. If you do it too early, then Crane will be like a, oh shit, I fell on a, you know, I fell on a trash pile or sort of thing. So that recovery animation takes time. But if you time it right, then you could uh, fall on this section here without any animation and save you some time. So we, we're running forward here. Now, this is some part, this is the part where the Paisa suit comes in place. So if you vault over this, and then we use our Paisa suit, we glide across like this. And that's very easy. However, um, you can just get away with just jumping down like this as well, which is slower, of course. Um, so, you know, if you if you have a Paisa suit, you might as well use it to go across like this. Now, of course, uh, there is a method actually uh, where if you tackle the if you tackle the toad, and then you can, you can actually jump across um, by vaulting over the the tackled toad. So that's something to consider. But anyways, we continue across the route here as well. And we just run across here. Now, now um, you can just climb straight up like this, but you notice how you go into a uh, little animation here, because climbing animations, you know, obviously we use up time. So if we go up straight like this, you know, Crane goes into a long uh, climb animation, but if we go across like the lower edge here, we can actually skip that animation right there. So this applies to the whole run, to the run as a whole. Um, sometimes you want to zigzag a little bit to actually avoid animations, just like we'll see just now. So if you go here and we just climb straight up, then that's an animation, but, uh, if you time it right, you can actually go up here. Let's see if I did it first time. There we go. Avoided that animation by jumping on the lower right hand side and running across here. Paisa also helps with this section here if you want to jump earlier, but you can perfectly do it without it there. And then we run across here, zigzag a little bit up here to avoid animations. And we simply go up on this zip line. Now, this isn't the most crucial part of the run yet. We'll get to the, uh, the most important part of the run, which is the tower climb. But I'm just going to uh, cover all our areas here first. So you want to go off here, and you also also jump off early onto this bus. And then you could also uh, jump across here, and use a Paisa to jump across to this building here, to hit this checkpoint. Alternatively, uh, if we just ignore this guy here, alternatively, after jumping off on this bus, we just simply run straight here. And then you can also climb up this bin. Oh. Climb up this bin, and then go up here like that. Hit this checkpoint. And then this is something that um, uh, a lot of people struggle with, is building climb as well as the tower climb, we'll talk about that. What I like to do, is I like to jump up across here, you can jump up on this uh, platform here, and then you can just jump up here. Now, we're going to be using the tic-tac skill, and we're going to be going across like this. Jump, tic-tac, climb, tic-tac, climb, look left, jump up, and boom, we're already at the top of the building here. That's a very uh, simple and effective way to climb up here. And now, of course, you just jump up here, hit this, go across the zip line here, get up here, and this is where we hit this point, which is the most important part of the run, which a lot of people struggle with, which is the tower climb. And we'll get to that in just a second. Alright, so for this section, uh, we're gonna, you don't need to be actually using the Paisa suit here, you can just simply jump across like this, grab this. And instead of climbing the ladder to our right, we're going to be going up directly through this part, which is faster. And up, up through here like this. So you can either jump across like this, or you can just simply jump on the ladder and go up like this. Uh, for this perk part, we could just be running across, jumping up here like this, ignoring the ladder again. Going left, running across this way. And now we're going to be over here, the north side face. You see the little compass on the right? The north side facing where this is. We're going to be going over here and climbing up this way. You can simply just press forward, and now we're going to look up and jump on this. And now we're going to jump towards this, here. Just continue, continue pressing W to, uh, or forward to jump up. I have to go here, and now we just simply use the regular routes. We just bypass a lot of climbing, 
um, by simply doing some more effective climbing there. So now we go up here. And as soon as you jump up to this section on the right, we turn left, go here, see where this power junction box is. We grab the leftmost side of here, like this. And now we just jump, simply jump forward by, um, by just pressing the forward button. And Crane just jumps up for us. Now we go up here. And Crane just simply jumps up the rest of the way for us. And we hit the top. You could, uh, at that point there, you can move to the right a little bit. But that's about it for the climbing section. If you follow that uh, straight to the point, then you should save a lot of time climbing. So now I'm going to demonstrate this in a full-on proper run by quitting to menu, because obviously we can reset by going straight to all the way to self-title again. So let me just do that and demonstrate a full run. Alright, so for the purpose of this single run demonstration, I'm not going to be using a booster and I'm not going to be using a Pizer suit as to show the worst worst possible outcome of you not using any of these items to help you because this is still possible without any of them. So if I just go forward and start it right now. Let me try and cancel early onto the bus. This isn't necessarily easy, but let's see. There we go. Got that. Now I'm going to try and tackle and then vault over the, over the toad here. Sort of works, can be used better, but then again, still better than just climbing out regularly. So we go up here, jump over these, across the right here, zigzag a little to avoid animations. There we go. Let's try and avoid this animation here. Nicely done. Now we run across here and jump here. <laughs> Voice crack. All right. Avoid these animations. Those rocks can be a little bit finicky and grab the zipline. Drop down early, so you don't have to uh, go across like that. I failed that, but that just shows what happens. Land on the bus early, or fail like I did. See, if you fail, then you actually have to climb on top of the bus. Alright, so we run across here. Jump on top of the bin. Spam the jump button. Let's go here. There's a viral after me, should be fine. Let's just do that. Car. Alright, you can also vault over a zombie, but I'm just going to jump here. And jump up here. And now, tic-tac time up this building. Just hold the jump button, and now you can just go up here. There you go. Alright. Running across here, we're just going to be going up the tower now. I'm going to be demonstrating the uh, tower strat and route that I talked about earlier. So climb up here. Ignore the ladder and just go straight here. Vault up here, go across, ignore that, go up here, go all the way around to this part, climb up here. I may have gone a little bit too right, just look just like that, and jump up here. I'm standing here and go here, there we go. And now we just simply jump again, out here, turn around, go up this ladder. Do you even call these ladders? I guess they are ladders, they're weird, they're weird ladders though. But anyway, go across here, turn around. Junction box here, and then climb up. And boom, there we go. Almost 30 seconds left. And uh, we got the quiet dagger pretty easily using this method. Um, there were even mishaps there of me uh, screwing up trying to explain stuff as I was doing it. And even then, we got away with almost 30 seconds there. So anyways, that's about it. You can do this quest multiple times, this bounty multiple times, by getting multiple quiet daggers. So let me just throw this one away, just for lols. Now, you can obviously use stuff like the speed booster or the Pizer suit more um, to help you, you know, get even faster. Of course, this, as I mentioned earlier, that the speed or nightmare, uh, speed or night hunter boosters only work on hard or nightmare. So make sure you're on that. If you don't want to do that, then of course, I just demonstrated that you can do it completely easily without the Pizer suit or the speed boosters. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Hope you have a good one, and uh, good luck getting this quiet, I guess.